breathing new life into my home art studio. But before you run away thinking this will be just another studio tour, wait, I promise it's not. I'm not going to bore you with all the details, maybe a few, but more so I'm here to share how I made the decisions I made and why. I believe that we all deserve a space to create art, a specific spot in our home that is designed specifically for the act of art making. And honestly, I understand having space to create art is a blessing and a privilege. But I want you to know this, whether you have a whole room to dedicate to this journey or just the whole corner of a kitchen table, it's important to think about your space. Friends, today's video is sponsored by FlexiSpot. It's an adjustable desk that I have fallen head over heels in love with. One of the pain points in my old studio was my desk. I photograph and I create content, video, and I'm painting and sketching. And it seems every job that I do here in this space requires my desk to be at a different height. But I always had to just kind of suck it up and deal with it. Well, no longer. My husband was nervous. He couldn't imagine that when this thing was at its highest height, that it would be stable. Now I told him my flexi spot desk would hold up to 300 pounds. And so I threw the kids on here and proved to him that this thing wasn't going anywhere. Now granted, of course they don't weigh 300 pounds, but seriously, this thing is strong. Standing while you draw and sketch can be such a great way of engaging more of your arm and more of your body and can give you such incredible free flowing lines. So I am one happy creative camper. Thank you so much. Flexi Spot. Here are the three things I considered most when recreating my studio space, and they are in order of importance, according to me. So take that all with a grain of salt. Number one, light. North facing light, natural light is the best of the best. It's what you want to do and have when all the stars align creatively in your painting space. But alas, that's not the type of light I have in my studio. I think it's south facing. It's like the opposite. But I do have a bunch of big, beautiful windows. I just wanted to stretch the light. I wanted to be able to paint in natural light for longer during the day. And so the first thing I decided to do, even though I'm an absolute 100% lover of color, yes, friends, I decided to paint everything white and not just white, semi-gloss white. I figured that if I could get the light to bounce around this room more than it already was, I would be in good shape. So I wanted a paint finish that had a little sheen to it. And please don't unsubscribe at this point when I tell you I indeed painted over my pine wood ceiling. I know I'm hearing all of the startled gasps, but I'm sorry, I had to do it. Everything in my studio before this was very warm. As the pine wood aged, it actually yellowed more and more. And so the warmth just intensified over the years. So I gotta say, for me, being that I was short on the perfect type of light, for long periods of the day, painting things white just made sense. Now, maybe you have a space that has a ton of north facing light and you just wanna leave your walls as is. That's fine. I just ask you to consider light and whether you could improve things or not in your space. Number two is storage. And yes, I put storage above inspiration in terms of importance because for me, it directly tied into inspiration. Let me explain. In my original studio space, everything was out. You could see all of my mess, all of my supplies, all of my hordes from different videos, all of the watercolor paper. I mean, you get the drift. It was everywhere. And while I am a maximalist and I love more is more type of a mentality, the stuff surrounding me every day that was absorbing some of my light, we talked about light already, and absorbing a lot of my mental space was really starting to get to me. And so I decided that I wanted to invest in closed storage. 
So, so long open shelves for Christy Rice. It's all about cabinets and drawers and the like. Here's a look at my actual inspiration board. I actually know how to use Photoshop and so I went ahead and put this together in Photoshop, but you don't need Photoshop to do this. You could just put a Pinterest board together. I found items that I thought would function well, made sure they fit the space in terms of sizing. I wanted everything to feel custom, but I certainly didn't want to spend to actually get custom. So that took a little bit of extra elbow grease and measuring for me to figure it all out. But let me tell you what, Overstock.com, Wayfair, places like Ikea, they will be your friends. Now, if you're curious about the specific places that I picked up all of these items, I will link them below, mostly overstock.com and Amazon. I'm a big fan of these flat file style rolling cabinets. I have about three of these going in here and oh my gosh, they're the best. This was an Amazon find, super affordable. All the links will be below. Gotta be honest though, filling these cabinets was a shocking reminder of my art supply collecting obsession. Yeah, moving on. Number three, let's talk about inspiration. Your space needs to be inspiring. Let me rephrase. I believe it should be inspiring. And whether you have a big old budget or absolutely nothing to spend on this revamp of your studio, you can still make it a place that stirs your soul creatively. I used to work at the tail end of our dining room table years ago. That was my space. And I did a couple of things. I always made sure that the draperies were open and the shades were rolled up. And I also had sweet little, cute little containers that I loved, vintage tins filled with supplies on the table. And yeah, we, we really didn't eat at that table. <laughs> I also made sure in that crazy little small space that I had access to music that I could pop on at any time and be inspired by. And when I could, I would pop a little bud vase with a few specimens of something that I picked out of the backyard that felt natural and vibrant and full of life. And all of that cost me nothing except a little bit of time to think about. Right now, the studio is still undone. So as far as inspiration goes, I've got some of my potted plants. I've got some fresh dahlias that were just picked out of the garden. And that's really it for inspiration because these walls are still pretty bare. I'm working on it. The part two to this studio redo is coming up real soon. You're gonna wanna check in the comments below because when it's ready, I'm gonna put it there. I don't know about you, but when others are talking about being inspired, I get inspired really easily myself. So maybe now is the perfect time to give these 12 second roses a try. And until next time, happy painting and loads of inspiration.